be very, very quiet. I'm hunting wabbits. Wiz and Liz is a weird game. On the surface, all seems fine. You're a pair of wizards, you accidentally magic your wabbits away, and now you've got to travel all the lands in the kingdom in order to return them to their rightful place. It's a simple story, but fair enough, everyone loves wabbits. And yes, that's wabbits with a W. Where Wiz and Liz really stands out from the crowd is in its mechanics, which are both simple and strange in equal measures. It's a game that takes a traditional arcade platformer, rotates it 37 degrees, sticks its tongue out and says, Bet you didn't see that coming. Actually, it probably stuck its tongue out after it finished talking. This is a cheeky little game, and one that I experienced originally on the Mega Drive. From memory, there's not a great deal of difference between this Amiga version and that version, outside some visual clarity. The speed, mechanics and feel of the game are just as I remember them. However, having looked further into it, apparently the Mega Drive version is a bit snappier. It obviously doesn't have any loading to speak of being in cartridge form, and there are a few extra bits of content. Dependent on whether or not you're hardcore Amiga or you don't mind playing it on Sega's hardware, it seems that the Mega Drive version would be the one to go for. However, let's move on. So, what is this game all about? If you've never played before, you may have been watching this footage and thinking it all looks relatively straightforward enough, and it is, but the devil is in the details here. As Wiz, or Liz, it doesn't really matter, you'll enter each of the game's worlds and go hunting for rab... wabbits. You'll do this by running at speeds even Sonic the Hedgehog would be jealous of. I mean, seriously, I've played racing games slower than this. You power across the landscape, grabbing wabbits before you've even realised they were there, spin jumping through the sky with an abandon that belies the octogenarian nature of Wiz and Liz. What the hell have they been eating? Well, fruit and vegetables is likely the main staple of the diet. Once you've collected a wabbit, things will happen. At first, letters will fart out of the wabbits like a lost soul, and you'll need to collect enough letters to spell the magic word at the top of the screen. Once you've cast the spell, wabbits will start dropping fruit or vegetables. That's right. This makes sense. Collect enough of the fruit or vegetable on a level and you'll start to tow it behind you. This indicates that you've collected enough of said food stuff and you'll be taking it back to your wizard's lair. For the rest of the level, any wabbits you pick up will drop stars, timers or bonus letters. Each level is made up of two stages and each one follows the same pattern. So what have I not mentioned here? What core ingredient of a standard game is missing? Enemies. There are no enemies in Wiz and Liz. There's something much more insidious working against you. Time. Time is your enemy here, and depending on the difficulty you play the game on, it's one that'll constantly have you on the back foot. You need to rush through these levels as fast as you can, but you also need to make sure that you pick everything up. But you also need to make sure you go the right way, but you also need to make sure that you do all of this as fast as humanly possible. It's a roller coaster, but the track is a themed landscape and the carriage is an old man who thinks putting a couple of vegetables in a cauldron is magic. That's not magic, that's soup. Magic soup is important though. After each level of Wiz and Liz, you'll be returned to your home and the two ingredients you collected, or should have collected, will be available for you to mix together in your cauldron. Grab the ingredients, stick them in, and wait. This, for me, is where the magic of Wiz and Liz comes to life quite literally. When you first start to play the game, you have no idea what each combination of ingredients is going to do, and frankly, not knowing what each of the combinations will do is the most exciting thing. As kids, as much as me and my friends enjoy playing the core game, it was the magical surprise that really got us excited. Like a fantasy box of cereal whose Rice Krispies came second to the hunk of reformed plastic you got along with them. It could be something simple and boring like extra time or points, but it could put you into one of Wiz and Lizzie's many mini-games. Games that make no sense in the context of the game you're actually playing. It could be a game where you have to throw tomatoes at people in stocks. It could be a game of snake. It could be something that isn't even a game, such as this visualizer. Even after all this time, there's still a thrill to be had from seeing what comes next. Altogether, there are 104 different combinations and bonuses, unless I miscounted. Not all of them are good, not all of them do anything, but the thrill of seeing what comes next is something that Wiz and Liz will really draw you in with. And I will stress this, don't look up what each of the combinations do. It ruins a huge element of the game. Do it old school, experiment. Write the best ones down. At some point, you may put a combination of fruit into the pot that opens up a fruit shop, from here, you can spend your hard-earned stars to buy whatever fruit you want. Pick a combo, whether it's something you know or something you want to test out. 
or don't. Wiz and Liz is freedom. Wiz and Liz is life. This is the core game loop of Wiz and Liz, and there's almost nothing further to add. You run around, you collect wabbits, you collect bonuses, you go back home and cast a spell, and you move on to the next world. It is equal parts simple and entirely different to most of the games you'll find in the time it was released. Or even now. Having no enemies in the game seems like an incredible gamble to take, but it allows the game to keep moving at a pace unlike anything else. Although when I say no enemies, this is a slight lie. Once you've beaten all the worlds, you're taken to a boss fight. There are multiple bosses for multiple difficulty levels. Here I was playing on a relatively low difficulty, so I have to fight this mildly creepy looking sunflower thing. This being a game with a cutesy aesthetic, the creepy nature of some of these bosses can be a bit jarring and oh my god, I've just pulled his eye out, what the hell is going on? The bosses are lackluster, I'll put it that way. They mostly follow the same pattern of moving from left to right and you dodge while shooting automatically. They're fine, but they don't really bring the game down and the artwork alone for each of them is something to look forward to. All that's left to add is that there are two different sliders for difficulty levels. One will change the difficulty traditionally and simply make the game harder to complete, including adding exploding wabbits into the mix that you'll need to try and get to before they pop. And the other changes the skill level, and this is weird. On the hardest setting, our titular wizards are reduced to walking at the same speed you would expect someone of this age to walk. In order to get back to your full supersonic speed, you need to jump. It doesn't matter if it's a big jump or a little jump, jumping is the way to get your speed up, and this is... awkward. It's not unplayable, but it does make mopping up the last of those wabbits a bit of a nightmare when you're desperately trying to chase them down on a lower platform and you keep accidentally jumping to a higher one. It's a strange way to mix up the game's difficulty, and again, it's one I can't help but commend them for. It's not particularly the way I like to play, but it's inventive and daft. And that sums up Wiz and Liz entirely. Inventive and daft. Are there any downsides to Wiz and Liz? I honestly struggle to think of any. Some people may walk into this game expecting a traditional platformer and be completely disappointed with the fact that this is anything but. Those who walk into the game with an open mind, who gel with the manic pace, those who can't wait to see what happens when you put a banana in the same pot as an avocado, those people no doubt love Wiz and Liz just as much as I do. It is wonderful to come back to a game you haven't played in years and realise that it has lost nothing through time. I can't think of another game that does what this game does, and honestly, I don't think it even needs to be attempted when this is still as fun to play now. Whether you pick it up on the Amiga or Mega Drive, you'll have a healthy, nutritious blast, and the game has enough options on the difficulty sliders to allow you to play the game the way you want. Just play it.